Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone that is helping to lead worship today, I welcome you. It is our honor and privilege that you are here. We're so glad that you've chosen to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this beautiful day that God has given us. I want to extend a special welcome to anybody who may be worshiping with us for the very first time today. I want to encourage you, if that is you, to make sure that you you fill out our contact form. The link for that is found in the comments section. And I'd love for everyone to use that contact form today. This is the best way that we can connect with you and get to know you, that we can get you our e-newsletter that has all of the wonderful information about ways to connect, to grow in faith, to be in small groups and opportunities for service, all of those things. So everyone, please use that contact form today. There's also a place there for you to put your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So again, please use that contact form. Now, when we gather for online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. And what that means is that we promise that we're going to fully participate in this time of worship. This isn't just a random video that you're watching today. This is a time where we are worshiping God with one another. So please go ahead. When it's time to pray, pray. When it's time to sing, jump in and sing. When it's time to focus in, focus in. If lighting a candle will help you do that, please do that. We encourage you to turn off other devices and distractions and just really fully participate in this time of worship today. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that everything that we do is going to be a blessing. The way we're in the comments together, the way that we are in interacting with people that we may be joining with in person, with everyone that's involved in worship with our community, that all of it will be a blessing. As we continue with our worship, I invite you to center in and focus as we join together with some centering music that is brought to us by our handbell choir. Welcome to worship. Good morning, I'm Steve Dunker. I've been a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for several years, and I'm a member of the Finance Committee and the Welcome and Inclusion Team. Please join me in a spirit of prayer as I pray aloud our opening prayer. Holy God, as we worship today, we like to think that we love you with all of our hearts and our souls and with all of our might, but there are so many other things in our lives that clamor for our attention that we often relegate you to Sunday and times when we want you to rescue us. We get bogged down in the daily routine. We forget who we are. We forget who you are. We forget who we are called to be as your church together. So we are here today with all of our foibles and our short attention spans, asking that you would make yourself known to each of us and that you would help us recognize your presence, which is everywhere and at all times, that you continue to challenge us and inspire us and make us into the people you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. 
you can say, peace be with you, and respond also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with these folks in your church community. Peace be with you. Hi, my name is Sue Greenfield. I'm the chair of the Nurture Committee. Peace be with you. Hi, my name is Carol. I'm a Wibble volunteer and may peace be with you. Hi, my name is Patience. I'm in Jam. Peace be with you. Join us as we sing How Great Thou Art. I want to invite all of the children who are joining with us in online worship to get in really close to your device and your screen so that you can see and hear everything going on with Small Talk. Small Talk is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come on on really close for one of our favorite times in worship, Small Talk. Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Lori and Laud. I think we've dried out since last week. And so we're gonna have, oh, and Laud's assistant, Cohen. I'm so sorry. And today we're gonna have some breakfast with you guys this morning. And it's Laud's favorite, Pop-Tarts. So, all right, Laud, are you ready? Okay, here's your Pop-Tart. No, no, just this, this is your Pop-Tart. What, you're unhappy you just have a third? Mm-hmm. You have a third, well, you got a third. I know there's two more, thir you're not happy about the third. No? Hmm. But it's the same, I mean, it's the same. You've got three pieces here. No, you, oh. This probably is reminding him of what God expects from us. He wants our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole soul so then to love the him. Tart, then. Well, yes. So instead of just these thirds, he doesn't want just like part of your heart. He wants the whole thing, right? You want the whole Pop-Tart, just like God wants all of our mind, all of our soul, all of our heart. 
in this Pop-Tart. Come here, Lod, come and get it. Have a great day. And just remember that your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul, all for God. Enjoy your Pop-Tart, Lod. Thanks for the Pop-Tart. Bye. Hi, my name is Jill Gordon. I'm president of United Methodist Women at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and a member of the trustee committee. Today's reading from the Bible is Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked them, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and beside him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burned offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared ask him any questions. It is so good to be with you today as we continue in our summer worship series, Stories to Live By. Of course, our entire Bible is a story to live by, but this summer we are lifting up particular verses or stories from the Bible that are uh, particularly meaningful for our preachers that are leading us in worship during this summer. Over the last two weeks, we've had stories and verses shared with us by Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, by uh, Cameo Mansi, and those have been such a blessing, those testimonies and that teaching uh, for us. I encourage you to continue to join in worship online or join with us for worship in the sanctuary at 11 a.m. at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church as we continue in this series. You don't want to miss a single week throughout this summer. So today you get another one of my stories to live by. And I'm going to have to begin with a true confession, a confession of committing vandalism to church property. Vandalism is not something that I generally engage in, but I've always wanted to write in wet concrete. But I've always held back. Even when I was a little kid, I'd see it and I'd be like, oh, I want to draw on that or put my hand or my foot in that. And I, I've just never done it. All of my years, I've never done it until the beginning of this summer on Friday, March 14th, 2021, to be exact. Quite unexpectedly, the city of Springfield came and ripped out this horrible section of concrete driveway and sidewalk on Douglas Avenue, on uh, our church property, on the stretch that runs uh, from our driveway to the corner uh, of Governors. And it needed to be replaced, and it had been a long time, and it's needed to be replaced. So we were really excited that this work was finally being done. It was like, yay! But we were also really surprised by this occurrence because the city of Springfield didn't tell us that they were coming to do this work. And we were also really concerned because they dug up this huge hole which completely blocked access to the back parking lot of our facility. It was late on a Thursday afternoon uh, when they came and they did this and left this huge hole and we had a full complement of ministry activities going on for that weekend. Now, blessedly, the city of Springfield uh, responded to our dismay and our need to be able to access our parking lot for the weekend. And so they came and filled that huge hole and replaced the concrete driveway entrance on the very next day, on, on that Friday morning. And they used this really fast dry composite material so that the driveway would be set and ready for our use right on Saturday morning, which we, we needed it to be. So this was excellent. So I was on my way out of the church building on Friday afternoon, May 14th, 
and there it was. Our new back parking lot entrance. It was this beautiful, fresh, quick drying concrete and it was so smooth and so flat and so perfect. It was so in need of something. It was finally my chance. It was obvious that the Holy Spirit had finally presented me with my opportunity to draw in concrete, to artistically decorate this concrete, to leave a beautiful and meaningful something at this entrance to our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church property. Not my handprint or my footprint or something like that, but, but something else. My heart began to beat faster. I looked around and immediately I, I found a stick that was just the right size and had a pointy end on it, perfect for drawing in concrete. My heart was beating even faster and my breath came quicker and it was like, oh my goodness, what do I write? What do I draw? I have like no artistic talent and there wasn't much time to think of anything because that concrete was drying right before my eyes. Do I draw something? Do I write something? Do I just throw this stick away and just walk away from this enterprise? And then it came to me. It wasn't anything very huge, but it was something that has been incredibly important and foundational to my life of faith for decades. So in the lower left corner of the driveway, I drew something that looked like this. A heart and next to it the words God and neighbor. And I even managed to spell neighbor correctly under pressure, which I am really super proud of. Heart God, heart neighbor. A kind of shorthand for love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Then, feeling particularly inspired and emboldened at that moment, I went to the lower right-hand corner of that fresh concrete and I wrote the words, all are welcome. And I was giddy with my vandalism. It was secret, except it was Friday afternoon, it was a bright sunshiny day and people were walking by with their dogs and they were laughing and waving at me and people honking as they drove by in their car. But I was giddy with the excitement and I jumped into my car and I kind of sped off. When I came back the next morning, it was Saturday morning, it was pretty early, I went to go check on the concrete. I couldn't wait to see how my messages had set up there. And I found that the city guys had come back later on that Friday afternoon and they'd smoothed over my work. They hadn't smoothed it over very well either. You can check that out for yourself if you're here at the church property and you can see that. But ultimately my attempt to leave a mark in that concrete was thwarted, the message erased. But the words, the meaning, the principle of those verses, this teaching of Jesus, those will never go away. They can't be simply smoothed over, disregarded, or left out because they are too foundational. They are too deeply etched on my heart and mind, and I'm willing to bet on many of your hearts and minds as well. And they have been for the thousands of years that people have been loving and following Jesus. And for thousands of years before that, as the foundational law from the Hebrew scriptures called the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. That never goes away. Jill read for us the version of Jesus' teaching on this from the Gospel of Mark. This teaching is so foundational and important for the followers of Jesus that it's repeated in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke as well. Jesus is quoting of the Shema from Deuteronomy and then the law from Leviticus and his teaching of it. It always lives within a similar kind of story within uh, it's gospel teachings within those Christian gospels. It's a kind of story that I find so compelling and helpful, instructive, and one I need to hear over and over. The kind of story Jesus' teaching of these verses lives within always goes something like this. Religious leaders of the day are trying to trap Jesus in one way or the other with questions that are designed to trip him up or to set him up. 
They want to make Jesus articulate and set priorities that match what they believe is most important in the religious life which generally matches up with whatever belief or religious ritual keeps a particular sect in power or proclaimed as the one with the right belief and practice. These arguments are a no-win situation for Jesus as they try to suck him into choosing a side in an argument that has been raging for generations. But each time this happens, Jesus doesn't fall for their trick questions that seek to have him set wrong priorities. Jesus doesn't fall for the questions that seek to take his focus off of God. Jesus doesn't take the bait in conversations that seek to have him prioritize power and exclusion instead of prioritizing God's kingdom of radical love and justice. So Jesus doesn't follow them down those rabbit trails, but rather focuses right into God's truth and God's purposes. Jesus quotes the Shema found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 5. It's an all-encompassing form of the Ten Commandments. It is the summation of all the laws. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Basically, love God with everything that you are and everything that you have all the time. Then Jesus goes on to say there's a second law that is much like the first and quotes from Leviticus 19:18. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Basically, love your neighbor with everything that you are and everything that you have all the time. Then Jesus, Jesus finishes by saying there is no other commandment greater than these. I don't know if you caught this, but at the end of the telling of the story that Jill read for us, that comes from the Gospel of Mark, after Jesus shares this teaching, the story ends with, after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Why? Well, because Jesus brought everyone involved back to the heart of the matter, back to this foundational teaching, back to this foundational commandment of love if you will. If what you are doing or arguing for or practicing doesn't line up with loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and your neighbor is yourself, then you shouldn't be doing it at all. For me, this teaching of Jesus brings everything in my life, in your life, in our life together as a church. It brings it all back to center. No matter what distractions, inconsequentials, conversational traps, or exclusionary powers want to move me or you or us away from focusing on loving God and loving neighbor, Jesus calls us home with this commandment of love. That's something to really consider. It's worth thinking about and praying about and working to line up our lives with. These are verses to live by. And it sounds so simple. But when you start putting in the specific nouns that are particular to describing what it looks like to love God with all our heart, souls, minds, and strength, and our neighbors as ourself, well, that's when it gets like really real, right? Love the Lord your God with all your employment. Love the Lord your God with all your free time. Love the Lord your God with your love life. Love the Lord your God with all of your relationships, with all of your family. Love the Lord your God with your schoolwork. Love the Lord your God with your wallet. Love the Lord your God with your investments. Love the Lord your God with your retirement. Love the Lord your God with all your ministries, with all your small groups, with all your fellowship, with all of your giving. It's not just one thing or a separate time over there or a little bit of something over here, but we are to love the Lord the, our God with the entirety of who we are, what we say, how we vote, what we have, our relationships, how we engage all of these things. And we are to love our neighbor in the same way, with the entirety of who we are, what we say, how we vote, what we have, our relationships, how we engage all of these things. Jesus puts these two commandments together and makes the great commandment. That's what these verses to live by are commonly known as, the great commandment. Jesus presents them as 
intertwined, supportive, co-creative, one with the other. That their sum is greater than their individual parts. To truly love God with all that we are is to love our neighbor. And to truly love our neighbor is to love God with all that we are. Together they create a commandment of love for us to live by that births the very kingdom of God in our lives, in our church, in our community, and in our world. This commandment of love has long been a centering, grounding guide marker for me. It is literally inscribed in my body. I have trouble speaking it without doing the hand motions that go with it. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul with all your mind, with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. When I became pastor at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, I was presented with many wonderful gifts on my very first Sunday. It was a little over two years ago. One of those gifts, which seems kind of small, but right off the bat made me feel right at home, and it's this coffee cup. We give these to all of our new members, and I'll see if you can see that in there. It has on there a church that strives to love God and love our neighbor. Heart God and heart neighbor. They're right there. These are verses that I strive to live by and they have long been verses that our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church strives to live by too. So for the last of my true confessions for today, I'm not perfected in this yet. I'm certainly not in a place in my life where I spend all of my time, my money, my energy, my passion, my resources in ways that truly reflect love of God and love of neighbor. But I'm working on it. And I invite you to work on it too. To join with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in seeking God's guidance thanking God for all the resources we are so blessed to receive and asking for God's help to love God and love neighbor with all that we are, all that we have, with all of our words and our priorities and our time and our ministries, with our individual lives and with our life together. Amen. Please join us in singing Love the Lord.
I'm Ellen Dixon, and I would like to have you join me as we pray together today. Dear God, thank you for being our higher power, our being with us in the fire type God, our cohort in being joyful, our tutor in learning healthy thinking and actions. Thank you for augmenting our daily life and happenings and enlightening the path before us for being our fog light in when it's cloudy. Today, I especially want to thank you for having kindness be a fruit of the Spirit. You ask us to clothe ourselves with kindness. What a great wardrobe you provide for us. I ask that daily I take advantage of these provisions for me. Andy Stanley says, getting even is natural, almost predictable. Don't write a predictable story. Write a remarkable one. As we write our prayer today, our story right now, we write a paragraph first of gratitude to the God who listens. Truly, he is ecstatic to listen to us. In fact, he is all ears. Hear us, O God, as we manage to express our deep love for you and our needed desires to be in your presence. Actually, we always are in your presence and always have been. We next tell you of the progress and successes of our world. You have guided us and helped us take steps forward or have the courage to wait and be patient. Please continue to support and encourage those that are ill or struggling. Pain, remorse, and grief are part of the human experience and you walk these paths with us. Thank you. We are truly are never alone, even if it may feel that way. We walk by faith and by sight, not by sight. Please give wisdom as we walk forward. We praise for all, we are having praise for all the compass happenings this last week. We pray for each child and family as they learn and grow in this program. May we as a church family adopt each of these creations of yours in our prayers and in our thoughts. They are part of our family. We bring all of these things to you, the prayers of all who worship with us, as we say and pray the Lord's Prayer together. Will you join us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for your faithful giving to the missions of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Because of your support, programs like Wouldn't It Be Lovely, Compass, the Youth Group, and the Micro Food Pantry, and so many others have continued to serve our community through these difficult months. And thank you for your support of this weekend's garage sale. It was a great weekend. Now that we are beginning to return to the new normal, your giving is just as important as ever. You have many options for giving. You can use the online giving portal at the church website, www.douglasavenue.org. Setting up online bill pay is easy through your bank and it's also very convenient. You can send your donation each month at the time that's most convenient for you. Or if you would like, our bank can use an ACH draft to transfer an agreed upon amount from your checking account each month. Or you can simply send your check to the church office each month or drop it in the offering box on Sunday mornings. In addition to your financial giving, there are many ways you can put your faith into action this month at DAUMC. Heads up youth, tomorrow, July 19th, is the start of the DAUMC Serve Our Community Week. Youth will be reaching out to serve our community through a week of volunteer activities. Please keep our youth and their adult sponsors in your prayers during this week of service. Then on Monday, July 26th, we will hold the next session of Critical Conversations on Race. If you would like to participate, please watch the e-news or call the church office. Kids, how would you like to help the associates of Wouldn't It Be Lovely? Have you ever hosted a lemonade stand? 
It's easy and fun. Have your folks check out this week's e-news for more information. Once again, thank you for all you do to love God and love and serve your neighbors through the ministries of Douglas Avenue. Please join us in singing when we are living. Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It has been so wonderful to be together for this time, and I pray that your experience has been uplifting, has been meaningful, that you will join with us again very soon for online worship, or join with us for worship in the sanctuary at 11 a.m. on Sundays. We love you. We want to connect with you, to be a part of your life of faith, to be able to serve with you and to love with you and grow in faith with you. So I encourage you to use that contact form to put your information there so that we can get our e-newsletter to you so that we can be in conversation together and connect. And I want you to remember that there's a place there for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. We love to pray with you and, and love to do that. So please use that contact form. And now as you go into your day, go knowing that God loves you completely and that Jesus calls you to love God and love neighbor with all that you are, and that the Holy Spirit is going to encourage you and supply you with all you need to do that. So go for it. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. <laughs>